Okay, got it, box is checked. Hang on. Okay, here we go. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Today is Monday, September 20th, 2021. My name is Brad Snyder, and with my co-host, Sandy Arau, this is the iBug Buzz. The iBug Buzz is an open forum discussion where we talk about all things iOS, iPad OS, watch OS, TV OS, and that includes such devices as your iPhones, your iPod Touches, your iPads, your Apple TVs, and the Apple Watch. This is, we do not discuss the Mac. We have another call for that. Um, we, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, this call is being recorded and will be available on the iBug website uh, once it's done. And you can also find the call on the Sight into Sound website, as well as it will be released as a podcast that you can find on your favorite podcast catcher by searching for iBug Buzz. You can also ask your favorite smart speaker to play the iBug Buzz podcast. As I said, this call is being recorded. So in order to help us get as clean a recording as possible, we ask that uh, everybody stay muted uh, unless you're speaking. Uh, so let's go over how to mute and unmute. If you're on your iPhone or, or uh, other smartphone, God forbid, you uh, will find a mute button in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. If you are on a Windows computer, you can mute and unmute using Alt-A. If you're on a Mac, you can mute and unmute with Command-Shift-A. And these are toggles. They will turn it, turn your muting on and off. If you're joining us tonight on a dial-in telephone, you will use the star six will serve the mute and unmute function. Uh, as I said, let's see, if you wish to speak, we, we don't use the raise hand feature here at iBug. So what we do is we ask you if you'd like to speak, just uh, unmute yourself and state your name and wait for either myself or Sandhya to acknowledge you and then you can ask your question, make your comment. And then when you're done, we ask that you go ahead and mute yourself to help keep the background noise down as much as possible. Now, I think that's all my preliminaries. We're going to uh, try something new tonight. We're going to hold off announcements and do them at halftime. So let's go ahead, if Sandia will enable everybody's ability to unmute themselves and let's go around the room and give everybody a chance to say hello, tell us your name, tell us where you're joining us from. And if you're new and this is your first time joining us, please go ahead and let us know that. And we may have some follow-up questions for you later on. I promise not to put you on the spot too bad, but we like to know what kind of devices you might be using, how you found us, things like that. Just a little bit to get to know you. So if Sandy has got everybody where they can unmute, I'll go first. My name is Brad and I am in Dallas. My name is Jacob and I'm in Michigan. Hello, Hi, this Jacob. is Maria in Albany, New York. Hey. This is Herbie in Houston. Hey, Herbie. Uh, this is Terry from Houston. Uh, Sue's hey. been trying to get in there. She, she, you might have to send her another invite because somehow the email she got is not working. She is not able to get in the room yet. Okay, well, some of the, e I'm not sure which email, I think we had a problem with a incorrect link in some of them. So if you've got an old email from another one of our meetings, the link is the same for all iBug Zoom meetings. So if you've got an old one, you might try, try that and see if that works out better for you. <coughs> okay, who else we got? This is Stephen from Austin. From San Francisco. Oh. Stephen, Nikki, Nikki from San Francisco. <laughs> Nikki, welcome. 
Thank you. This, this is Dave from Southern Illinois. Uh, 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 Sue, Sue needs help. Somebody get her an invite. See if somebody can get her into the room. This is Sonia. Terry will have to take care of that later. Thank you. This is Dan from San Diego. And uh, yes, the old, uh, the old uh, Zoom link will work. Yes. Thank you. The new and the latest one they sent out works. All right, this is Sonia. Let's keep the introductions going, please. This is Gail from Houston. Hey, Gail. I should this like is... to the meeting if somebody would help me. Chanel in Houston. Oh, I cut. Oh, sorry. If I cut somebody off. Okay, thank you, Chanel. This is Suva this from is... Houston. Hello, Suva. This is Jim from North Carolina. Hey, Jim. This is Keith keeping it weird in Austin. All right. Keeping on some weird. Thank you, Keith. All righty. Dana in Cincinnati. We have Dana and there's somebody else in there. Arlene, North Carolina. Hey, Arlene. Are you... Hey, Arlene. All right. Hey, Jim. <laughs> Carol. Arlene. All right, Carol. Who else we got? Hi. Adam from Chicago. Hey, Adam. Welcome. Shree from Virginia. Shree, all right. Thank you, Shree. Kathy from Tulsa. Hey, Kathy from Tulsa. Anybody else? Jody from New Hampshire. All right, hey, Jody. People hit the button. All right, and Michael's joined us. Welcome, Michael. Michael in Texas. All right. Okay, is that everybody? We don't want to leave. say it again. Who is that? Claudia. I'm sorry, I still didn't catch it. Say this it is Claudia. Time. Oh, hey, Claudia. I'm sorry. Oh. Welcome, Claudia. Is that everybody? This is Ibrahim from Boston. Hey, Ibrahim. Thank you. Glad you're here. Who else we got? Anybody? Okay. Did we have anybody who's joining us for the first time tonight? If you are, go ahead and introduce yourself a second time and let's acknowledge you because we like to welcome our new, our new first timers. Uh, that's what keeps us going is getting more and more people in here. So if we don't, not, then let's go ahead and we'll move on. Let's see, who'd like to get us started with that? With, with our first question tonight. If we've got anybody who's new. This is Sonia. Hey, Sonia. Hey, Brad. Uh, yeah, so we are really excited because uh, Maria is actually going to be talking about oh, yeah. the Apple event from last Tuesday. So we're really excited that Maria is going to help us out awesome. tonight. So Awesome, awesome. Yes, I should have remembered that. Okay, well, without further ado, let's uh, let Maria step up to the microphone. All right. And, all yeah. right. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Brad. Sorry if I just cut you off there. No, <laughs> no, no, you're good. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> good, good. So, uh, yes, hi, everyone. I'm going to be talking about, so just to reiterate, specifically the actual uh, event of last Tuesday, the hardware event. Um, we're going to be discussing iOS 15, which came out today in much greater detail, uh, giving a more formal overview of its features and such at the Apple Workshop, uh, which you will, I'm sure, find out about in the announcement announcement section. So stay tuned for that. Or of course, the info is on our website, but I will not be talking about specifically iOS 15 in this uh, overview. So uh, Apple, uh, essentially, I'm going to take this in the order that things were discussed. Um, so uh, for, for the most part, um, they did uh, begin with talking about the uh, iPad range. Uh, so they upgraded uh, both the uh, entry level iPad and the iPad mini. So in terms of the one that's just called the iPad, the entry level one, so this is the iPad 9. And so just to um, also make clear, I'm gonna kind of go through all of this and then if, uh, meaning all of the products, and then if folks want to um, have any questions or discussion and such, we're, we're happy to do those, but I'm just gonna kind of knock them out now so that we get all the information um, for folks who are uh, interested and, and um, who might not be able to, to stay for the whole thing. So um, in terms of the, uh, 
entry level iPad. Um, essentially, it has a it, it looks the same as the prior version, but it has now the A13 Bionic chip in there, and that's the one from 2019. Um, so that uh, they're touting that you can have some faster machine learning, and uh, you'll get obviously some iPad OS updates for longer since it's a new device. Um, also, the front and the rear cameras are now 12 MP, 12 megapixel on the this entry level iPad and the front one uh, supports what's called center stage. That's a feature that's brought over from the iPad Pro line and that lets the camera keep you in focus even if you move around during video calls. Um, so I think that's something um, definitely for those of us who or blind is, you know, a useful thing. Sometimes, I, at least I don't realize sometimes if I've turned a little bit and then, oh, I have to correct myself. So um, some kind of a, a, a compensation for that would uh, is nice. Um, in terms of they touted a lot with the bra uh, Braille display, with the screen <laughs> display, uh, that it supports a true tone. That's what they're calling it. And that tries to adjust the color output to compensate for the color of ambient uh, light. So um, uh, this has been a feature on other iPads and iPhones for several years. So now it's finally arriving on this cheapest iPad. And, you know, perhaps maybe this might be helpful for um, someone who's low vision. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, and as I mentioned, since this iPad looks the same, the existing cases, keyboards, accessories for the prior generation uh they should still work and um the uh it's going to be offered in or it is offered in silver and space gray colors uh, and someone is muted if you could i'm um, unmuted if you could kindly mute that would be helpful um if someone who's just saying hang on maria i muted everybody so go ahead you have to come back in Okay, there we go. I'm back. All right, thank you. Okay, so it's going to be uh, offered just to uh, make sure nothing cut off there. It's offered in uh, the silver and space gray, and it's starting at $329 for 64 gigs of storage. Uh, and the uh, model for this year doubles the storage, which is nice. So the last year was, would have had just 32 uh, gigs in it, which, you know, in today's day and age just doesn't get you very far. So it's, it's good that they've doubled that. Now, in terms of the iPad, mini so they did do a lot of more upgrading here so this is the ipad mini 6 this is the first ipad mini to have an edge to edge display uh and this has been on the ipad air and pro and so now it's coming to the mini this means that the bezels are going to be thinned and there's no home button now and so what that allows uh similar to the other models it allows the uh, 8.3 inch display now is what this has and it's fitting into the same iPad mini chassis that used to hold uh, a screen that was a uh, half an inch uh, uh, yes a half an inch smaller on the prior version so um, for the touch ID is still here on the mini that's just been moved because the home button is no longer there that's been moved to the power button and this is consistent with the iPad Air um, again there's this true tone on the display it's brighter and larger um, inside of the iPad mini in terms of the audio which uh, we might find of interest there are stereo speakers now when you turn the iPad in landscape mode and again 12 MP cameras on the front and rear uh, you have the same A15 chip, which is the one that's in the iPhone 13 that we'll get to. Uh, there's a greater battery life, um, the compatibility with the um, Apple Pencil 2, and 5G cellular support. Of course, that requires a cellular model, uh, but there is now 5G on, on the mini. Um, on the outside, Apple has shifted now to USB-C on the iPad mini in place of the lightning port. So that allows you to um, connect a lot more accessories that are just a standard USB-C without a uh, lightning to USB-C uh, adapter. And uh, the deliveries um, of the iPad mini can be pre-ordered now. The deliveries are going to start an in-store pickup this Friday, the 24th of 
December, oh, September, um, the color options are purple, pink, what they're calling starlight, and then space gray. And this one begins at $4.99 for the price. So then we're going to quickly shift uh, before we go into the, uh, actually, no, we're going to shift then to the watch, and then I will mention um, this other because it's a kind of a related software thing so um the apple watch series 7 is what was announced um the corners of this one are more rounded is what it's suggesting um and compared to uh the the six um the rumor mill was talking a lot about flat sides but that's not the case so it does look you know, decently similar to the Series 6 for those who have that. Um, the screen size, um, it has the thinnest bezels yet. So again, similar kind of to this iPhone, uh, iPad theme with the mini, similar thing of thinning the bezels to have a larger screen size. So the Apple Watch Series 7 is about the same physical size as the Series 6. Uh, however, the screen sizes, so instead of on the Series 6, you had 40 millimeters or 44 millimeters, and now we have 41 and 45 millimeter sizes. So a little more screen real estate there, and it's brighter as well, they're saying, when the wrist is down. Um, in terms of uh, the, uh, because there's a larger screen size, there are going to be some new watch faces that take advantage of that increased uh, screen real estate. So a couple that they showed in the presentation, one uh, is showing some kind of a dial uh, time display that expands off the screen and out of the way when you raise your wrist, um, leaving the time easily viewable when the screen is not in use um, and the complications are available on the screen uh, space when you want to use the watch. This is a description that I'm reading verbatim. Um, the other face that was shown, it offers two large complication slots in addition to several small ones. So again, um, in ability to see more information at a glance with that larger size. Um, and other features for the screen sizes, you can have a full-blown keyboard now uh, on the watch and you can tap or swipe it. And there's a general redesign of the text and buttons to make them easier to um, read or uh, activate again with these larger screen sizes. So perhaps some, um, you know, maybe that might be a little easier for folks with some uh, usable vision. Um, it's not clear whether the existing, the 40 and 44 millimeters will get some of these new features, the faces and the keyboard and such. Um, but certainly they will be uh, for the Series 7. And I, just to point out, to clear any doubts, there are new, no new medical sensors and no new processors uh, on the uh, Series 7 as compared to the 6. Um, however, what Apple has been touting, that even though there's none of that, they're saying that the way that they redesigned the screen makes it more resistant to cracking when impacted um, in uh, falling off a bike was something that they showed in one of their demos and that's less likely to crack your screen now. That's what they were um, saying. Um, also, uh, they were talking about, and they're saying that this isn't actually because of a smaller, uh, stronger glass. This is because of the shape being changed. Um, also, so, so the durability is there uh, and actually another aspect on the durability, um, they're saying, so it has the same waterproofing as the Series 6. However, now it has what's called IP6X dust resistance. So it makes it uh, much less likely to be damaged by any kind of dust or other um, small particles. And certainly the battery is a big uh, improvement that was touted also on the 7. So when it's charged, and now there's a USB-C cable um, that it'll come with. So there's, Apple is saying that the Series 7 can charge up to 33% faster than the Series 6. Um, the Series 6 could uh, charge uh, faster than any other you know, prior watch before it. So they've increased the speed of that. And also they're claiming that the Series 7 can fast charge when it's low on power. So um, meaning that uh, eight minutes of charging, they're saying only eight minutes, um, that they will get you enough power to get through eight hours of sleep tracking. That's how they phrased it. I don't know what percentage they're basing that on, but eight minutes for uh, eight hours of sleep tracking. And they're saying that 45 minutes of charge will take you from a completely dead battery 
to uh, 80%. Um, and so we don't know when this is uh, yet, as of the time of the event, I haven't actually looked up to see if there are any updates. I, I should have perhaps that is an oversight that I can um, look up. But at the time of the event, um, there weren't any uh, dates listed of uh, when it is going to be coming. Um, but just as in uh, prior versions, there's a choice of aluminum, stainless steel, or titanium, either cellular uh, and then G uh, or GPS plus uh, cellular models. Um, I'm sorry, either cellular or just cellular and GPS or GPS only, um, as has been the case before. And again, in 41 or 45 millimeter screen uh, sizes. Color wise, aluminum is offered in green, blue, starlight, midnight, and product red. It starts at $3.99. Um, the uh, what they're doing in terms of older models, the SC twin, the uh, SC will be available for two seventy nine, and then for some odd reason, um, the Series Three is being sold for one ninety nine. But that is, you know, quite an, an old uh, version at this point. Um, in terms of, uh, I'll mention here, there was a bit of a note on their fitness. Uh, plus subscription because of you know the, the watch being uh, very like a workout heavy in terms of use case. Um, I think we may have discussed it before, but the fitness plus you know doesn't have really any kind of a spe special like audio description. So it may be um, difficult for you know those of us who are blind to to follow that is what I have heard. Um, so what they are uh, now doing they're adding some new workout types to fitness plus. So if you do want to give it a spin or, you know, have some sighted folks in your life or some such who want to play with it. Um, they've now added Pilates and snow sport preparation and mindfulness. Um, it's interesting that they're calling mindfulness a workout type. But anyway, um, that, that is good. Um, they're also uh, providing it in 15 more countries and languages. Uh, so there are um, subtitles for those uh, instead of native speakers. So again, accessibility may be hit or miss there. Um, they're going to introduce uh, group workouts to this. So allowing people to work out together, seeing each other's overall progress, um, you know, kind of allowing for some competition for people who want it. And that's going to come at some point later this year. And then finally, the huge you know, the, the relatively, right, the most anticipated um, announcement uh, is the the iPad, thir uh, iPhone 13 and iPhone uh, 13 Pro. And so um, here, again, they're um, looking the physically, they look the same as the prior generation in terms of having straight sides um, instead of the curved sides that the iPhone 11 used. Um, the cameras uh, on the back, they uh, apparently they stick out a bit. Um, it has the usual, again, edge to edge display. The back is glass, so on and so forth. So it does look very similar. Um, they're touting in terms of their focus. Uh, they focused on changes first to the display and the camera. Um, so this, uh, in case you have some other folks who are, have some vision or looking at this, um, the uh, they're saying that the display is 28% brighter, the large changes in the refresh rate. So this is how many times per second the picture on the screen uh, changes. And so the uh, refresh rate is now one second. Um, apologies, my head of freeze here. Um, so Apple's now finally caught up to what a lot of um, Android phones have been doing for years. They're using uh, ProMotion technology that's uh, found in the latest iPads as well. And so they're um, able to refresh now at 100, up to 120 Hertz, uh, but they're automatically going to adapt the refresh rate to uh, fit the situation. So, you know, maybe uh, this may, perhaps might uh, help with some battery or some such. So, um, and uh, they were saying this is gonna help the display to look, you know, smoother and, and sharper and such um, when you are scrolling, cause it's gonna again, match the speed of your finger. Um, they're talking about newer, brighter screens as well uh, on the 13 um, and those are a bit uh, easier on the battery, but there isn't uh, pro motion on the uh, iPhone uh, 13. So the first thing I mentioned about the refresh rate and such, that's for the pro. Um, and the uh, cameras, again, there's uh, 
talking about handling low light situations better than before, um, taking more detailed uh, images. And they're also uh, introducing a new photo video uh, mode. So um, this is uh, from a bit of a, an Apple Viz uh, overview of what uh, this is. So to try and kind of explain this a little like verbatim of what is described here. So this mode is called cinematic mode and it lets uh, it uses artificial intelligence and it automatically adjusts the focus when it detects a person or a subject that's about to enter the frame. Um, the uh, user can manually designate a subject that the camera should keep in focus and the user can also adjust the focus and the depth of the shot in real time. Um, the uh, so, you know, in, in theory that, you know, could be helpful in terms of keeping things in focus when you're, you know, moving around, which I know I, you know, as a totally blind person, that's something I struggle with. Um, so uh, in addition, so the uh, there's this advanced optical image stabilization um, that's been there in the Pro and uh, in the 12 Pro. And now that's been uh, ported over to the iPhone 13 as well, not just the 13 Pro. Um, and the iPhone 13 Pro supports a six times optical zoom and night mode on all three of the camera lenses now um, and some advanced recording formats for videography and both of the iPhone 13 models models support some custom uh, photo styles that are some um, adjustments that uh, that uh, like photographers can make the, the phone will save them and automatically apply them on each picture and so on. So um, again, that was a huge, uh, you know, bit of the presentation that they emphasized. However, um, they have, as usual, there's the A15 Bionic chip um, that I, I mentioned uh, earlier in terms of being in the, the mini as well. So this is uh, now an upgraded, it's faster than before, as usual. Um, they talked about it has four efficiency cores, which can handle background and low intensity tasks easily, and two cores that are meant for serious work. Add to that four cores meant to handle graphics, and so hence there are now a total of 10 cores. And there's a separate machine learning engine that's separate from that, um, and that's a separate from these uh, 10 cores and that deals exclusively with machine learning and AI tasks. And then the iPhone 13 Pro to handle uh, the extra features there, that sports an extra graphics core. And so lots of uh, processing power there. And it says uh, it has double the cache 14. And so uh, Apple is saying that it, they're saying is quote, a powerhouse, um, whether, you know, we will actually, whether a user will actually notice huge you know bump from 12 to 13 is you know up for grabs um so in terms of um some other changes the uh, battery life was improved and that's across both models uh i'm sorry across the entire line because there is also an iphone 13 mini so the iphone 13 mini and 13 pro so those two they have one and a half more hours of battery than their iphone 12 counterparts iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Pro Max have two and a half more hours than their counterparts from last year. Um, and also, this isn't something that uh, we can tell tactilely, but I, I guess if you're looking at the status bar and such, um, it's the notch that's in the top of the screen uh, is narrower and a bit taller than the one in the uh, in the 12s. And um, just a small note that the phones overall are slightly heavier and larger than the 12 but uh it won't be it, that while that may not be enough uh of a uh change for people to actually notice when they're holding them in their hand it unfortunately does mean that iphone 12 cases will not fit so that does require uh new cases for the 13. Um, in terms of the availability, uh, the uh, 13 is available. It can be pre-ordered now as the shipping and in-store pickup is going to again start on the 24th of September. 
uh, prices start at $6.99 for the 13 mini, $7.99 for the 13, $9.99 for the Pro, and $1,099 for the Pro Max. Uh, and do note in terms of the storage, again, it's been doubled from before, uh, doubled it compared to last year. So you get 128 gigs to start with now instead of the 64 gigs. And then you can also now get a 512 gig iPhone 13 and a one terabyte uh, iPhone. 13 Pro. So um, again, some doubling of storage there. Uh, color is the aluminum iPhone 13. It comes in pink, blue, starlight, which that's a white color. I should have mentioned that when I've mentioned it before on the iPads. Um, mid the Midnight, which is a black color, and then the product red. So there are five colors there. And the Pro models, those again use stainless steel frames rather than aluminum. That was the case last year as well. They're available in graphite, gold, silver, and Sierra blue, which is, I guess, kind of like a sky blue, according to this post. Um, so that is a, that is a, I guess, somewhat detailed, <laughs> but a hopefully helpful recap of the event. Um, if anyone has any like thoughts or questions or discussion, I will turn it over to Brad to uh, help moderate that. Okay, thank you, Maria. Okay, that was a nice run through of everything that was presented at last week's event. A um, lot to cover there. Thank you, Maria. All right, anybody got any questions about anything we just heard before we open it up to other stuff? Let's see what we can do. Can unmute this is this is go dan. ahead yeah dan go ahead okay i've got a question very good maria um do you know the, the storage capacity out of the box for the iphone 13 pro and also uh they didn't mention anything about lidar in the uh, presentation has anybody or you maria seen anything i'm assuming that lidar is still going to be available on the 13 pro is that Correct. Yes, that is correct in terms of the, uh, yes, there were no LIDAR, it wasn't brought over to the non-pro and there is no, nothing new about the LIDAR in the pro range. So it is basically the same as it's been um, in terms of uh, w what it was in the, in the uh, 12. And in terms of the storage, I want to, so the, the starting one is now the 128. And I believe I'm trying to quickly look up the specs, what, how all three of them run. I believe that it is now 128 uh, and 512. Let's see, uh, this is, I'm trying to do this. this is I'll go. Yeah, yeah. Herbie, if you have. The, ahead, yeah, Herbie. so they're all pretty much one. They all now start at one twenty eight, which is I think about the price of the sixty four. What it currently is then two fifty six, five twelve, and terabyte. Thank you. Okay, so there are four. Yes, and I'm seeing that now on the page. So yes, there are four configurations now for the pro. This is okay, free. Thank you, Herb. Okay, I'm sorry. Who was that? Say it again. Go ahead. Me or someone else? Yeah, you. Go ahead, Sri. Sorry. I was also going to say that um, I, I don't know how much of this really applies to us. Probably not much. But if you are going to do pro motion movies uh, and you want to do 4K, you will have to buy the 256 on the Pro Series. If you do purchase the 128, then you'll only be recording at 1080p. Not that it really matters to us. but All right. Thank you. All right. Well. To Sonia. Sonia, go ahead. Maria, did you say that the, well, is the red is not available? I want a red phone, but that's only in the, the mini and the 13, right? It's not in the Pro and Pro Max. Oh, I I do believe I saw, let me try and because I don't have them. Uh, no, it's, it's fine. I, I didn't, oh, I don't know. Seems like they there, always... are, there are a lot of colors that I okay. mentioned throughout All the right. week, so I'm trying to look that's... very quickly now. That's okay. To oh. see the searching for the word red, right? So, yeah, red. Yeah. I see. So, yeah. I will, is, um, yeah. This is Brad. I just went through ordering one for my wife and yeah, the product red is available in the 13 mini and the 13, but not in the yeah. uh, pros. Why do they do that? Okay. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Uh, okay. it's, it's the way they 
divide it up, I guess. I, I, don't I, I think they do it so that if people aren't wearing, uh, wearing or don't have a case that you can easily tell which color, you know, which iPhone generation they have or whatever, who knows, but. This is Michael. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, I was just gonna let you know, I just looked on the uh, Apple website, the, uh, yeah, Maria's right. They, you know, if you ordered last Friday when the pre-order started, then they start shipping uh, this Friday, the 24th. But right now, if you ordered it today, uh, the earliest deliveries are now October 19th through the 26th. Is that for, this is Brad. Is that for all models or just the pros? Uh, I, well, I went through and did it for a pro. Yeah. Wow. Maybe, wow. maybe some of the others are different, but. That is good to know. I'm surprised. I know there was, you know, some talk of like how much, how many of these are they going to sell and such. And either, either it means there are supply chain issues or the, the selling is going better than expected. This is Herbie. Yeah, Herbie, go ahead. The selling for the iPhone 13 is supposed is expected to be higher than for the iPhone 12. So, um, and that was calculated even before the Apple event. So that's what they were already touting on. That's what I saw. So maybe maybe they've been ready for this it. Is, this is Marty. Yeah, go ahead, Marty. Did you guys get? I I listened to the full you know presentation. Um, is there any indication uh, the these new for the new watch, the USB-C charger, um, will, you able, will you be able to use those chargers on all the watches, like you know the older ones? This is Brad. Um, I, I I believe you can. I believe the only thing that's different about the new charger is that the cable that comes with it has a USB-C on um yeah the so uh, i'm wondering if you, in. so it's marty so i'm wondering if you use that USB C cable in an older watch do you think it will the older watches will charge more quickly i'm not saying they'll charge in 45 minutes but do you think they'll charge a little more quickly than with the current cable this is Brad. I don't think so. I think that quick charging is inside the Series 7 watch. I don't think the charger is really any different. Okay. This is Shree. At least that's what I've read. Go ahead, Shree. Yeah, you're right on that too, Brad. And, and one, one of the disappointments that I found in the watches, even though they have fast charging, it's still the battery uh, is still an 18-hour battery, like the 6 I'm not sure if the five is 18 hours. In the past few years, they've all been the same 18 hour battery. Um, also, one other thing about the phones is, I, and I could be wrong, but I believe if you buy a 13 mini or a 13 and it's uh, non carrier specific, I think you pay an additional $30. But I don't think you pay for the Pro Series to get it uh, non carrier specific. Okay. This is Jake. Yeah, Jake, go ahead. Uh, I bought my, <clears throat> I upgraded my new phone to the iPhone Pro Max, 13 Pro Max. And I got a good, I got $790 off of it for trading in my 12 Pro Max. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, through Apple. Um, now it depends on your carrier what kind of deal you really get because like T-Mobile, I don't know if I'm gonna do it yet, but if I switch to the Magenta Max plan, I get up to five hundred dollars. If I do, if I keep the plan I have now, I get two hundred dollars. So really, I'd be getting nine seventy. Um, but if I were to go directly with the carrier, I would have gotten. A thousand, but with a catch twenty four months contract. So you have to remember that too. They got, they might be a good deal, but you have a contract, so they're anywhere from twenty four to thirty six months. Like AT and T has thirty six, T Mobile and Verizon twenty four, Apple no contract. 
actually 24, it's called Apple's is 24 monthly financing. But you can turn it in after a year if you want. You know, and get a new one. Right on the as Brad on the on the iPhone replacement plan through Apple. Yeah. Yep. And I believe they've also got some other uh, some other uh, financing offers if you put it on an Apple card where there's no no finance charge on it and some other things that I can't keep track of all the offers. Go ahead, Shree. I heard you in there. Jake, just a curiosity question. You traded in your phone. How long did you have your 12-4? 12 Pro. This will be a year. I'll have it for a year. So you so I'm just trying to do the math here. So you probably paid about almost five hundred dollars in a year, right? Yeah, give or take. And, yeah. how, and how much did they give you as the trade-in? Apple gave me seven hundred ninety dollars off of it. Right. So I'm yeah, just trying to figure out the math of how attractive that deal is based on how much you paid. Well. Thanks. It's more than I got from my last one last year. I only got 500 last year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So This is Herbie. Yeah, go ahead, Herbie. So one thing I've never been clear on, and this might benefit others if anybody knows the answer. So what exactly is the difference between, other than battery life and slightly bigger, are there any real differences between the Pro and the Pro Max models? This is sure. Um, Go ahead, Shree. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Um, I'll let uh, someone else. Okay. Um, what I was going to say is yeah, last Jake. year, <clears throat> the 11 Pro Max, this is Jake, the 11 Pro just... Max had more bands, like uh, LTE bands, and it had, um, like, they said supposedly, you know, bigger antennas, and it was supposed to have MIMO. So, Brad, are you talking about 12 Max or the 11? The, well, the Okay, I yeah, thought it was for the two 12 Pro ago. Max. Oh, yeah, this is cheap. Herbie. I'm talking okay. about the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max and the 13 Pro this is, and the 13 this is, Pro Max. This is Brad. Yep. I believe, if I heard correctly, I know that last year, the camera in the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max were different. I believe this year, they are the same camera. Last year, I think the 12, well, except for LiDAR, I believe the 12 and 12 Pro were the same. 12 Pro had LiDAR. And then the 12 Pro Max had some things that the 12 Pro camera didn't have. This year, I don't think there's any difference in the two 12 in the two 13 Pro models. I believe the camera is the same, but there's so much to keep track of on these things. So there is, I think I got that correct. And this is straight. Yeah, go ahead, Tree. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, everything that I've read, uh, that's the only difference. So most people that have talked about this is if you had 11 or 12, uh, you might be better off waiting till the next one comes out. I was really thinking about getting a new one. And then uh, the more I'm hearing other people talk, they said that if you have a 12, you're not going to see probably no difference. Because the battery okay. on the 12 Pro is pretty long. You know, I get a day out of it. So, you know, getting the hour and a half or two hours, you know, I may or may not even notice it. Okay. Yeah, this is Herbie. Yeah, Herbie. Yeah, I think I would notice it, the longer battery life. I mean, because I, it goes a lot if I'm out and about, but. Um, uh yeah okay but no i was just curious if there was any real difference between the pro and the pro max so uh, that definitely answers that question this is sonia yes sonia uh just one other very minor difference i mean to um one other thing that they mentioned was that the way that the you know maria indicated that the cameras are going to be much upgraded in the 13 pro and pro max and um the way that you could distinguish between the 12 Pro Max and the 13 Pro Max is they're laid out in a diagonal versus their current configuration. So apparently you could look at that and know what phone it is. So that's the other difference. Very minor for just letting you know. This is, this is, this is, Maria. Yeah, Maria, go ahead. Oh, Hang on. Sure. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just um, quickly. I know that um, when uh, Jonathan uh, Mosin did his, uh, you know, post event as he typically does on his Mosin at large, um, his daughter Heidi, who cited, I believe she said that the diagonal was the dual camera layout. So between the 12 and the 13, uh, vertic instead of vertically stacked on the 12, a diagonal on the 13. But I believe she said, that on the 13 Pro in terms of that layout of the three, I believe she said that it was similar to, uh, that it was kind of the same. Maybe they stick out a little more, but that it's, you know, the same on the uh, Pro, the the two on, you know, one, two stacked on top of each other. And then the third one kind of to the, to the you know, other side, like to the right, say, in the, in the center of those two. Um, I mean, I think if they were diagonal for three of them, I think that would make the phone a bit you know, taller, but anyway, that, that's yeah. what he was saying in terms of the, the layout. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, did I hear Sri in there? Yeah. I just wanted to find out if, if anyone's heard about the, the, about the camera being in the back and I've heard it, the, it, it, you know, it protrudes out pretty big compared to even the 12 that I have. And I've heard that when you lay the phone uh, flat uh, on where, where the camera lens is, it sometimes like tilts left and right because it's not equally balanced when it's on the a flat surface flat surface and i was wondering if people have heard that because i know i use my camera flat on a table sometimes doing some work and I, i'm sure it could bother me if it's just you know tilting left and right as i'm using the camera so i was just curious if anyone heard of it this is this herbie. kenny Let's see hang on let's go uh herbie and then kenny it wouldn't surprise me just because like the 12 Pro that I have right now can kind of be a little bit wobbly if I lay it down flat. So and those cameras stick out a little bit. So I think the only way around perhaps that issue is to get a case that would, you know, be flush with the camera and that would solve that problem. But it would not surprise me if the phone was a little bit more wobblier. All right. Kenny, go ahead. Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't know about the wobbliness, but you're correct on the uh, camera lenses. The I think the telephoto they said was uh, uh, bigger, and and uh, uh, that was for the three um, X optical zoom for the thirteen. I think that's what they said. This is Jake. Okay. Yeah, Jake. Yeah, I have a question because I was trying to order an Otter box, <clears throat> and I went on Amazon, and it said iPhone OtterBox Defender Series case for iPhone 12 and 13 Pro Max. Like they were selling the same case for the same type of phone. So that would tell me that the design would be kind of the same. This is Shree. Yeah, Shree. The, the depth of the two between the 12 and 13 is different. Uh, I know that the 13 is uh, the, the sides are bigger and it's also weighs more, so I, it can't be the same exact size unless the outer box has got spaces that it gives out for a bigger, bigger phone. I, uh, this is this is Maria. Um, yeah, Maria. I would I would suggest I haven't. I'm trying to look it up now, but I would suggest go on the outer box site and see what they are doing. Are they listing them as the same, or whether they are? you know selling them as completely separate cases and i would kind of you know base it off of that instead of amazon right now just because this is so new um i did that too and they are different but they're out of stock so uh-huh this is brad a thought i had is i know that like for the iphone uh se 2020 you buy a case for se 2020 it says it also fits an iphone 8 and an iphone 7 but if you have uh, an, a case for your older iPhone 7 or your iPhone 8, they will not fit the iPhone SE because the difference is the SE has a little larger camera module. So the older cases won't fit the newer phone, but the newer phones fit the older. The cases for the newer phone fit the older phones because the older phones have a smaller, little smaller camera module. So perhaps that's what's going on. This is Keith. Yes, Keith. I was just going to say, I think, you know, the phone without a case, I think it might be an issue, but I have an auto box on uh, my Lip Pro Max and I have a specs case on my eight and both of those camera wells are pretty deep. 
So I would think that, okay. you know, they've taken into consideration that, you know, they're a case maker, so they're going to try to protect everything on the phone. So would you recommend just to buy a new case or just try to use the one I have now? Are you asking Keith? Bob, Keith, or anybody that wants to answer. Keith? I'm sorry, go oh, ahead and repeat your question. Oh, this is Keith. I'll, I'm not sure. Go this ahead. is Tree. This is Kenny. Go ahead, Tree. Personally, you spent, uh, I don't know, over $1,100. I would make sure I get a case that's going to completely protect it. And I would get a case that's specifically made for that and not try to uh, put something that says could fit 12 and 13. Because this is not like going from iPhone 7 and 8 plus. This, these are two different sizes. They're built different. So right. I would I would be very cautious in going cheap with the case versus protecting it properly. Okay, I think I heard Herbie in there. You know, I was just going to mention that I have stopped using a case with my phones for the last couple of years with the iPhone 11 because they have been, the phones themselves are rugged enough now to where um, unless you're really going to like drop it a lot, then maybe that's, a different story but you know just something to consider like you know um i myself and jonathan mosen might be the only people on the planet who don't use a case for our phones so you might be joining in a very exclusive club but um i have personally found that i've not needed one i don't need the extra bulk added to the phone it is uh you know has done well and i've traveled with it um and you know it's been just fine but i rarely drop my phone you know I, I the case i think was a little bit more necessary for me like when the cr phones had those rounded curves that did make it a little bit harder to hold but you know with the 12 model and they, the fact that they've gone back to the flatter edges i think that even makes the phone easier to handle and so i just wanted to throw that um, out there but otherwise if you are going to get a case i would definitely make sure you get one that is specifically designed for the iPhone 13 because it's going to be just that much different to where you know you're gonna you know because it's gonna be a tiny bit heavier and so yeah you're and that's gonna affect the way the phone you know f fits into anything so I would definitely make sure if you're gonna get a case that I'd get one that is designed for the 13. This, this is, is Marty. Oh, hold on this is Sonia. Okay, go ahead, Sonia. I think I heard Kenny in there after Herbie oh, yeah. before you get to Marty you and Keith. Okay. Okay. Kenny. Thank you. Um, for those of you who, who, you know, don't need to get the phone uh, tomorrow or next week, as it were, uh, I fix it usually does a great teardown of the new phones and uh, they will tell you literally exactly what's inside it. And they'll, sometimes even compare it to like they'll say oh last year um it was a square chip you know this year it's a round chip and so they will compare um as they're doing the teardowns uh for the phones uh you know l last year's versus this year and so forth and so on and and i usually wait for that or for apple to release the specs of the devices to to really you know find out what's inside and uh they should be doing it um, sometime. I would say, um, I think they you can buy them next Friday. So I would say sometime uh, over the weekend. That's true. Very good, Kenny. Thank you. Let's see, who do we have? We had, uh, I believe, Keith and then Marty. Yeah, I was just going to say one more thing real quick about the case. I mean, if there's a, a question in the description, like on Amazon and it lists 12 and 13, and uh, you do want to eliminate the wobble. I think it's worth uh, contacting the case maker, whether it be uh, Autobox or Specs or whoever. Usually they'll have at least an email address or a contact some way to get in touch with them. Let them tell you exactly which one they designed for the 13. All right. Thank you. Let's see, Marty? Uh, before I ask my question, what's the site that Kenny mentioned that talks about the phones? 
Um, he mentioned I fix it and they, oh, um, I fix it. I fix it. And I see um, their reports mentioned in uh, when I read Apple insider or nine to five Mac, I, I will see them mention I, what I fix it has had to say about a new device. Cause oh. like Kenny said, as soon as they come out, there's usually an I fix it report. They get their hands on them as soon as they're released and they're taking them apart and seeing what's on the insides. Um, well, my question was, are we taking questions on other stuff or are we doing the phone for like the full mm, like going to try and finish talking it? about the phones first, I think. And then we'll move on to other stuff. Go ahead, Sri. Okay. So one thing uh, I want to also you know, think about is, you know, when you buy these devices, whether you want to get Apple Care or not, the question that I wasn't very clear if Apple Care now on the new phones, if they're covering the back glass, if it cracks. Uh, my my thought is if if Apple Care doesn't cover the the back glass, then I would say you, know, you want to try and protect the phone as much as you can. But if they do cover it under the Apple uh, Apple Care warranty, then maybe I would go without a case. But you know I know in my twelve I was told that if the glass in the back breaks, they have to replace the phone. So and that's not cheap. So. Okay. I have a question. This is Suba. It's okay. Yes, go ahead, Suba. So my question is more of like real, um, real life experience with the uh, the difference between Bionic Eleven and uh, the uh, the A A fifteen, the new one. So does or the fourteen? And those are the twelves. So daily tasks, not gaming. Um, what is the difference? Does anybody have any experience with that? Um, A11 versus A14? Not gaming included. Are you asking about A11 versus A14 or iPhone yes. 11 versus the chip in the mm, iPhone 12? A11, I believe, is actually for iPhone 10s. Yeah, right? okay, a few, yeah. few generations yeah. back, okay. Yeah, it's okay. about 10, eight plus, those are all A11, okay. and then you're talking about A14, which would be the current up to 12. So yeah. my question is in real life experience, like just email, phone call, whatever, anything else except gaming. This is What is that? Does anybody have any experience on that? All right, Shri, go ahead. So everything that I've read, that if you had an iPhone 10 and you're a regular user, you're not going to gain that much for a regular user. Now, obviously, if, if uh, you want the LiDAR, that would be my only reason that I would say you would upgrade if that's a factor for you. But for sure. a normal user, for a non-gamer, we're probably not going to notice any difference. From, a, from going from a 12 to 13 for a normal user, you're, gonna know, you're not going to notice any difference. It's basically and coming from like a, you know, 11 Bionic like years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I would say from, like I said, if you have a 10 R or anything beyond that for a normal user, they basically said no reason to really upgrade anything below the 10. They said it might be worthwhile to upgrade, but if you had a 10, there's not anything really that critical that would say you need to upgrade. For a normal user. This is Herbie. Hey, Herbie, go ahead. I think part of the reason, too, why the phones need, like, some of the faster processors, like, with the 12 and up, um, you know, because they have to have the processing power to support 5G. And um, so, like, for me, you know, I've not noticed a difference in the speed chip in the phone. I have noticed some differences with LTE versus... 5g but that's because i do a lot of um you know youtube i also do like a lot of um like high quality music um and so it's things like that where you really notice the difference between that but in the actual overall phone processor i've noticed maybe a tiny bit of improvement um i think maybe a little bit a little bit less latency with bluetooth perhaps but um, from a real life experience, you know, in the overall phone performance, 
Maybe the other thing is I think the phone boots up a little bit faster um, yeah. than the 11. I think that's the other difference I would say that I've noticed um, in terms of performance. This is Suba. Okay, Suba, go ahead. Thank you very much for everyone for your comment. The only other thing, um, I was actually looking up the numbers from if anybody is familiar with N22 benchmark. Um, so I was looking at the numbers and actually the top on the list is iPad 5. And um, I don't, so in 12, 13, whenever they come out, I will see where, where they rank with that. But we, we're talking about numbers game. That's where the, you know, they're reaching 800, sometimes a million. iPad 5 is reaching, um, I think 11, Four oh eight three seven. That's the score it's reaching. Like it's it's crazy. But iPhone eight, like you know, eight Bionic uh, elevens are reaching three hundred thousand. I don't know if it's single core, multi core, if it's combined. But you know, it's, it's just the twelves and everything. They're reaching about seven hundred thousands range. So I'm just I'm just wondering. Like I see the numbers. Um, the top in the list currently is iPad 5. I mean, hold on, is this, is this iPad 5? Yeah, iPad Pro 5, 12.9 inch. Um, but yeah, I'm just a little curious on like, why would you, you know, it'd be better to just go get an iPad instead of just worrying about the, the iPhones since they don't even, you know, top their, uh, the numbers are not the, you know, the, the, there are better numbers available. So I'm just curious on that. This is Sonia. Hey, Sonia. We're at our midpoint. So. Oh, we're at the midpoint. <laughs> yes, we are. So. All righty. Uh, well, thank you. All right. Thank you, Maria, for all your survey of the Apple event. And um, so we, you know, unless there are other questions, we're going to be moving on to our regularly, back to our regular program. So we're going to recap. We're going to do our announcements real quick. Um, for tomorrow, we have our clubhouse event at from five to six, the iBug mini buzz, doing basically what we do here on the clubhouse platform. Then we have on, let's see, then on Friday, we'll be well, we know what's going to happen Friday, right? Well, we'll come back to Friday. Uh, Saturday, we have the iBug Apple Workshop talking about iOS 15. So that is going to be devoted to that. So, um, you know, it came out today. So maybe some of you have already downloaded it and or you're waiting or not sure if you should download it. So that is where we're going to be talking about the new accessibility features and bugs and, you know, so forth. So uh, come and join us this Saturday, the iBug Apple Workshop from 2 to 4 Central Time on this same Zoom conference line this Saturday. So then, so then, so then, let's see. We have Friday. Did I skip Friday? That is the iBug Night at the Virtual Movies. And with our wonderful, uh, indecipherable, I don't know, I've just run out of adjectives because they're just so mysterious. So with those clues that I don't know how to describe is our lovely iBug guy. Mr. iBug guy, are you there? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> you are muted. yes 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 oh there you are thank goodness i was getting worried sorry sorry uh one drink got in the way there okay yes <laughs> friday we have i bug night at the virtual movies join us 7 30 p.m central time for the pre-movie social the movie will start around eight o'clock and then we, if you want, you can stick around afterwards after the movie for a, what are we doing after the movie? We're going to have a short discussion, critique of the movie, and maybe look at some trivia. So that's coming up this Friday. And the uh, feature for this Friday is 
Oh, no. I'm supposed to do the close. <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell you what the movie is. All right. But before I do that. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Oh, well. I know people, and I didn't see what nobody mentioned. Well, I guess we may talk about that on iOS 15. Uh, people always like these uh, emojis, some people like emojis. And, you know, emojis uh, first came on the scene back in the late 90s. Uh, some people think that emojis is some kind of uh, contraction of emotions or something like that, but they would be wrong. Actually, emoji is two Japanese words, one word being e, or the letter E, and moji, which the, these two words translate to picture character in Japanese. And wow. the uh, mobile carrier Docomo uh, introduced those uh, in, like I said, the late 90s. At that time, they had about 170 different picture characters, and they were on a very uh, cruel 12 by 12 pixel, uh, and I think they had actually six colors that you could find on some of the you know, Japanese phones. But uh, you know, then after, of course, the late uh, 2010 timeframe when, the iPhone came out and Google came out. Samsung started making their phones in the early uh, 2010s. Emojis started ramping up. Actually, uh, Apple put a, you know, the emoji keyboard in 2011 and Google followed suit in 2013 with the emoji keyboard. And now today you have access to over uh, 2,700 different emoji. I mean, everything from all kinds of people, plants, food. Uh, I did hear that uh, one of the new emojis is going to be a pregnant man. So there you go. Oh my goodness. Can, can we get you the movie clues, please? Please, please. All right. So oh my enough gosh. about emoji. emoji enough. History. Way too much about emoji. Go ahead, please. All right. I did have a question. No, no, I'll, no questions. I'll, I'll no. I'll save done. that for yeah, please, the please. question and answer period. <laughs> I didn't done. get a chance to ask my question no, on the uh, it's all right. It all you can wait. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to Michael's movie show. Thank goodness. <laughs> okay, we have five clues. And just like all the other times, we want you to say your name. Don't just be yelling out the movie titles. Wait to be recognized by me, and then we'll let you guess incorrectly. All right, now. <laughs> guess incorrectly. <laughs> Yeah. So did I say negative. that out loud? Yes, you did. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, okay, clue number one. Our film this week is based on a true story about a girl from a rural slum town who rapidly sees her life change. This is Shree. Shree. Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog Millionaire. We've actually already seen that. And that's about a boy. All right. <laughs> the pregnant boy. Oh, stop. Okay. Go on. Clue number two. Anybody else want to take a guess? All right. Moving on to oh, clue number two. He tries. He we tries. Give him, we give him... Well, we don't make credit for trying. We take away his credit. Okay. Clue number two. Sometimes the place you're used to is not the place you belong. 
Can you say that again? Sometimes What's... the place you're used to is not the place you belong. Oh, that's actually a line out of the movie. I forgot to say that. This is Keith. Yes, Keith. Oh, okay. Annie. Annie would not be the correct answer either. Good try. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Did I hear Next. somebody else? No. Go on. Or Next. Someone else want to guess. Okay. Clue number three. The size of your dreams must always exceed your current capacity to achieve them. This is Shree. Shree. Million dollar arm. What, what, what? I didn't catch that, sorry. Million dollar arm. Million dollar arm. <clears throat> million dollar arm. Okay. Well, okay. since I don't even know what that is, that could not be the movie. It's the football it. movie. Oh, All right. okay. Baseball movie. I thought it was a baseball oh, movie. Oh, oh yeah. the million dollar arm. Ba yeah. Baseball yeah. With, with okay. that drunk guy. All right, keep going, keep going. Drug addict. Okay. Charlie Sheen. I never just thought of his name. I was, watching a I was watching we, a movie you, with his father and his other brother. We, we don't want to know. my other mother. <laughs> Will you stop? Go on. Okay. The size of your dreams must always exceed your current capacity to achieve them. You said that okay. one. Okay. No, move on. We're done with that one. Oh, I yeah. thought I heard somebody else about to guess. Okay. No. <clears throat> no one asked to repeat the clue. No. All right. Glue number four. <sighs> one of the girl's best friends is the bishop. I don't have my cricket noise tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, we could hear them pretty well. Okay, next, clue number five. All right, clue number five. I know, I know we're going to stump the audience. Yes. We, may have to, we have to maybe go into bonus clues again. All right, clue number five. It's Later. Kathy. Oh, late entry for Kathy coming in at the home stretch. <laughs> This is a, a, a circle of friends. <laughs> a circle of friends. Yes, yes, yes. No, That's no, it? no, 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 no. Sorry. All Good right. Try. Okay. Next. Clue number five. Later, the girl also befriends the king and queen. Clues are getting worse. What? It's the movie about the chess playing girl. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me tell more. Me more. Like this we, already that uh -huh. we already what? saw that movie. Yeah, we already saw that one. All right, Jim. Um, Jim's on the right track. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit is not... <sighs> The right, it's on Netflix. right movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. This is true. That's also on <laughs> Marty. This we do Marty. Netflix movies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, Marty it's and it. we'll come it's back. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. One at a time, one at a time. It's a Marty. Marty. Marty I think. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go to Marty, then Street. Is it um the one with Merle Street? Is that Working Girls or something? Uh, No, it would not be that one. Okay. All right, uh, Shri. Is it the Queen's Crown? The Queen's what? Crown. Queen's Crown. No, that was not it either. Jim was on the right track. It is about a chess playing girl from the little small slum town in Uganda. It is called the Queen of Katve. Like, sure, you got it half. You got yeah. queen. <laughs> well, hell, I ought to get it half too. Yeah, I think you get the other half. <sighs> okay. I, I, just, I don't know. I mean, it's like. <laughs> well, yeah, but you were on the wrong <laughs> half. The Queen's Gambit is actually a series on Netflix. I know so. that. But all right. It was, yeah. close that's like, that's it was good. Million, You're good. Okay. All right. Okay. Mr. McGonagall. Off with their heads. Yes. Off with their heads. 
<laughs> this is a movie that I don't have anything else to say because I don't know the style of the movie. So in other words, it's a movie. That's all we need it's, to know. It's a very inspiring film. Okay, so let's go with it. Okay, very good. All right. Now, I always fall asleep in the movies. Okay, Johnny, what do we have for our winner this week? Okay, for do it in my Jim and Shree are going to split this. A queen. <laughs> well, you're going to, well, you can each have one, I guess. So it is the wonderful chess board, of course, in iBug colors, red and black. But the pieces are <clears throat> no expense spared for you guys. Instead of black and white, they will be gold and silver. So there you go. Have fun with that. Hopefully you know how to play chess. A and little bit, not, yeah. You'll learn how to do it after this. So thank you very much, Mr. iBug Guy, for those wonderful clues. And uh, we, we hope... should have had five level chess. All right. Okay. What, Th- what year is this movie? That only works on the Big Bang Theory. It came out in 2016. Oh, okay. All right. It's so Kathy. I wish yes. you were seeing Annie. Oh, yeah. Maybe one day. Okay. Thank you for playing. Um, Mr. McCulloch, would you like to say goodnight, please? I seen Annie. She didn't age well. She yes. grew up. <laughs> yes. Say good night. Thank, thank you for playing. Good night, Gracie. All right. We made it through the movie clues. Thank you very much. Ooh. Okay. Uh, all right. So now, now we are going to, we are switching things up a little bit. And now we're going to do, remember, we do our little eye bug bite segment. So now that we have your attention. We're going to do that, and then we promise we will get back to all of our questions. I know you have questions, so that this will be five minutes or less. Mr. Brad, you want to tell us what we're going to be talking about today? So this is a brief tip. What? Alrighty, folks, a brief tip, as they say, on iBug Bite. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about an app that's on the watch. Usually we talk about something on your iPhone. Tonight we're going to talk about the watch we're going to talk about the walkie talkie feature it's been on the watch i can't remember how long but it came out a few iterations of the watch os ago maybe two years ago i'm not sure but uh i'd really never messed with it until recently and i discovered it and thought it was really pretty cool so you open the app on your um let's see can we hear that is that okay sonia 2047. Yep, let me mute everybody real quick. Just hold on. Hold on. All right, so you need to unmute again. There you go. Perfect. Yes. All righty, here we go. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to open the. You'll find it in your watch. Uh, It's one of the stock apps. So let's see, I've got it. Okay, you get it open. One of the first things you want to do is turn it on. It's got an on-off switch here. Walkie-talkie, on. On, so you're going to want to turn it on. Okay, then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to have a list. You need to have a walkie-talkie friend. And uh, so you'll go through your... Friends, send, Teresa, add friends. You got to go, there's a button to add friends. And when you open it up, it will open up pretty much everybody in your contacts that's on your uh, iPhone. Uh, that your watch accesses. So you're going to go through there. And when you know it, who have I added as a friend? Sandaya. So I've I've got walkie talkie on friends heading walkie talkie on button friends head Sandaya Rio. Okay. So you select your friend and your friend. Actually, once you do that, we'll get a little alert on their watch. If you have already connected with them, you got it. You yes, sir. It? Yes, you're now, You will find here in that the. Button. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Touch and hold to talk. Okay. You can hear yours is doing the same thing. You, you have a volume thing. You can adjust the volume of your walkie talkie speaker, which you're hearing. You have another button. Touch and hold to talk. Touch and hold to talk. That's voiceover to tell me what to do. And that's pretty much it. So I am going to double tap and hold and say hello to Sandia. Hello, can you hear me? Over. 
So that was coming out of my Apple Watch, and now I'm going to respond. Touch and hold to talk button. Good evening, Brad. Good evening, Brad. How is everything over there, wherever you are on the moon or in Fort Worth or no, you're in Dallas. Sorry. You forgot to say over. Yeah, well, you don't have to say over. We were playing with it earlier today. And, um, over and out, 10-4. Yes. Are there any cops on the freeway ahead up there? Y'all got a couple smokies coming up on your back door. <laughs> no, the coast looks clear. Over. All right. I think they got the anyway, point. So you see the point. You hear, and actually, uh, we're sitting here kidding around saying over and stuff like that. But you will <laughs> notice it gives you some little chirping tones. You hear uh, a little higher pitched tone when you double tap and hold. It identifies that you are beginning. Your mic is open. When you let go, you hear a lower pitched chirping tone that tells you that you, you're, you're done. You've let go of the button. And... Um, that's pretty much it. It's a neat little feature. You can play with it. Uh, a couple of things I did notice in the few days I've been playing with it. If you don't want to, be, if you don't want to be bothered in the middle of the night, this thing will still go off. If one of your walkie talkie friends decides to uh, see if you're around. And even if your watch is off and on your charger, you will hear it if it's nearby. So you might want to turn this feature off. I have found the uh, you, in addition to the on off button being in the walkie talkie app, if you open your control center, I have found that I have an on off switch for the walkie talkie feature in, in there. So just one little caveat to think of, but it's a neat little feature and it can be a lot of fun. So that's our Apple bites app. I bug bites for tonight. Back to you, Sandy. This is Marty. And Kathy. Okay, go ahead, Marty. Um, He's over there you laughing. Think Apple so will, you think Apple will ever change that? Because I, I think it's a little cumbersome rather than doing the double tap to hold and talk, like where you could just press the crown like you do with Siri, you know, press the crown and talk. Well, I don't know. Uh, it's on screen. Uh, if you're not a voiceover user, you don't have to do the double tap and hold. It's just touch the button, right. let go of the button. So the double tap and hold is a, is a voiceover accommodation. So the digital crown does other things. So, I mean, who knows what Apple might do, but the way I see it is it, it just, that's how they're, I don't see it changing. The, does the digital crown have any function with the walkie talkie right now? Or I don't know. Uh, you might be able to turn, uh, I can't remember if it's digital crown navigation off, and you might be able to use the digital crown to adjust that volume. But I found that I put my finger on that volume slider and I was able to flick up to raise my volume up or down. So I didn't really okay. have any. I'll, I'll, I'll play with it. Play with it. Thanks. Let's see, I think I heard Kathy in there. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I was just wondering, there wasn't any um, delay time. But you and Sandra are in different locations, right? No, yeah. Well, yeah, as far as oh, I know, we're in different God. locations. Thank <laughs> God. But um, no, it's, it's pretty bad. instantaneous. And as a matter of fact, this friend of mine over the weekend who introduced me to this told me she was playing with it and she was using it. It worked similar to um, um, uh, FaceTime calling where it goes through the Wi Fi and she was communicating with a friend in Australia. And it worked just like uh, I'm con communicating with Sandia, who, you know, is like 200 and some wow. odd miles away in Houston. And I'm in Dallas. And like you said, it's pretty instantaneous. And my friend said the experience with communicating between Dallas and Australia was the same. So it's a pretty slick feature. Wow. This is Jake. Yeah, go ahead, Jake. You think that has anyone ever like reached out and you think they'll ever bring it to their iPhones? Nah, no telling. Who knows what they might do? Uh, it's kind of a cool little Dick Tracy thing on the watch there. I thought kind of like yeah. when I'm talking on the phone, it's like um, back, back in the Dick Tracy cartoons. But no, uh, mm -hmm. I never yeah. messed with it until a few days ago. I thought it was this pretty neat. This is Jim. 
Here you go, Jim, go ahead, then Herbie. Okay. I, I mean, to me, it just seems like more of a gimmick than anything else. Because, you know, with um, FaceTime, uh, you know, you can do so much more, particularly with a new update now. And I'll shut up, Herb. You're next. Yeah, go ahead, Herbie. All right. Yeah, I mean, walkie-talkie is kind of cool because you can communicate in real time but not have to have a live conversation. If you want it on the phone, you know, there are a couple of apps like Zello, which is pretty accessible, um, <clears throat> Voxer. But one thing that has really always frustrated me about the walkie talkie feature on the watch is the way you have to add friends so the only way i know how to do it is to go through your contacts list and if you have a bunch of contacts that can be very aggravating plus but the thing i wish apple would do is sort out the contacts so it would display actually the people who have the walkie talkie feature enabled in your contacts, so you can just quickly get to that list because I don't need to see all the non Apple Watch users as I'm flicking through. And so I'm just wondering if you know of any faster way to add friends other than going through. I, I, I don't know. I know that what I had to do, like with Sonia, I could I, I send her an invite. Uh, actually, she sent me an invite um, early. We had arranged to get together this afternoon and play with this together and make sure we had had it working in other words we were going to rehearse uh and she sent me an invite and um i didn't uh get it right away i don't know what happened i don't know if i was on on my doing something but it did not show up in 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 my notifications anywhere and then once we got together on zoom and we're doing this she sent me one and it showed up in my notifications on my watch now I, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this out. Now, one thing I did learn over the weekend is if you're on the phone and uh, one of your walkie talkie friends turns on the walkie talkie and, um, and taps on your name, it'll first tell them, you know, trying to them checking, you know, checking to see if they're available. And after a few seconds, it comes back and, and says um, they're not available. So like, you don't know, they're either on the phone or they've got the feature turned off. Um, so, uh, only if the person is, is available. And apparently since it, you know, the watch is connected to the phone. So I'm figuring it's going through your phone's connectivity. Now, if you have a, a cellular watch, which I do not have, it might work differently. It might not go through the phone and that might not matter. So it, the experience could be different if you've got the, uh, you know, cellular enabled watch. This is Sonia. Yes, go ahead. So I was going to say, uh, respond to Herbie's, uh, you know, I was thinking the same things when I was trying to find Brad, of course, his name starts with S and it's like way down my list and flicking through, like, I think it said like a thousand, you know, pages on the Apple watch. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, this isn't worth it. But I did figure out a way to navigate by heading and you can navigate by letter. So I didn't know yeah. that. I've never done that before, but mm. I was able to do that. So, uh, all right. So you. we want to keep it. going. Any other final comments? This is Shree. Terry. Shree? Shree. Shree and then Terry. And so then uh, do you know, up. can you do it with more than just one person or is it just going to be one-on-one? -on -one? No, you... as far as I can tell, it's just two people. Okay, thank you very kind of limited but it's a neat little feature go ahead terry um you can uh, also use the crown to to zoom through your contacts to get to the one yeah. you're looking for so yeah, that's that a good sense. thing and i've been using the walkie talkie um for a couple of years and there are times when my friend carla in the uk and i will talk on on the walkie talkie and it's kind of fun. However, there are quirks sometimes where it'll work really well. And then there are days when um, the, it doesn't work so well and it, it shuts down and then you lose the person on the other end. And the thing you have to be careful of is if you both accidentally press your, open your mics at the same time you get a lot of reverberation and weird sounds and feedback. So you, you want to be careful about that. Okay. 
Well, thanks for right. that information, Terry. All righty. Okay, thanks, Brad. Up. Thank you. Yeah, very fun. Okay. All right. Now we are getting ready for questions, what we normally do here. This is Marty. Go ahead, Marty. Um, I created a folder about, well, a few weeks ago because I wanted to, and Apple arbitrarily, it must have had to do with the app that I put in the folder called it Travel, which is okay. But I'd like to, if there's a way, to change the name of that folder. All right. Who would like to help Marty out with his question? The folders? This is Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. You should be able to double tap and hold on the name of the I think that method still works to bring up the rename dialog. Like you may have to go into edit mode and then do the double tap and hold, but that should bring up the option to rename the folder. All right. Thank you, Herbie. All right, Marty, I hope that helps you out. Good luck. This is, G this is Gail. Go ahead, Gail. Okay, I have a couple quick Apple Watch questions. The first one, um, the speed, um, the speed on the watch, um, to turn it down, I, I turned the rotor to the speaking rate, and then I tried to plug down, but it wasn't to, to uh, slow the speech down, but it wasn't working on the watch. That's my first question. Go. Well, let's. Well, uh, uh, anybody have any help for Gail on fixing the speed of the speech on her watch? This is Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Um, you might try if you haven't already. Um, turning first, turning voiceover off and then turning it back on to see if that does it, or turning your watch off. Mm -hmm and then turning it back on sometimes there can be a glitch that way because that is the proper way to to do it to swipe up and down if you're in uh, if your rotors on um uh, uh speech uh well, i forget what it's called now but you if you haven't tried those try that and see if that fixes the okay. problem this All is right. this is marty go ahead marty it is her pro is your is her problem that she wants to change the the rate of her speech on the watch? Right. Yeah, I want to turn it down. Okay. Yes. So, so what? Uh, one way to do it, and, and it I just happened arbitrarily to me. Um, if you swipe up um, to notifications, and you have no notifications, um. When you when you swipe up and down for some reason, it starts changing your speech rate. So if you swipe like if you're at sixty percent and you swipe down, it will go to fifty five percent. Or we swipe up, it will go to sixty five percent. So that's a quick way you can change the speech rate. And then of course when you're at that, um. When you're at the rate that you like, then you press the crown or something to leave notifications. Because if you continue swiping, you'll you'll change your rate, and that's swiping up and down. All that's right, fine. thank you, Marty. Okay, who has the can, next? Wait, well, this is Nikki. Gail. Can I can I ask my second? Uh, okay, just question? hold on. Let's you can come back. Okay. We can let's get everybody okay. another chance, and then you can okay. come back. All right, who has the next question? Elisa? Nikki? Hey, Elisa. Go ahead. Elisa, are you ready for a question? Okay, well, we can't hear you. All right. Okay, uh, go ahead, Nikki. Go ahead. Okay, um, thank you. I've been um, hosting some Zoom programs lately, and I've been, rec I've been hitting record. And my question is, can I mute myself at any point since mine is the only uh, phone or computer handling the recording or will that prevent the recording from going through? Because I noticed there's some records here and Michael, Michael is muted, but I'm sure his recording is going through, but I wasn't quite sure and I didn't want to mute myself this in case. Really so I have to sit very quietly right. 
and not make any noise. <laughs> no, that's yeah. Go ahead, Herbie, real quick. All muting does is mute your mic. That doesn't affect the recording. That doesn't affect the audio. What you hear. So yeah, you're perfectly able to mute with no problems. There you Thank go. You so Thank you, Herbie. Thank you so Good much. question, Nikki. Okay, who's next? Moving on. Next question. This is David. David. Um, this is another Apple Watch question. Uh, like if you start a, a call on your Apple Watch and you want to transfer it back to your phone, I haven't really found an easy way to do that. And I end up sometimes disconnecting the call. You know. This All is right. right. Great tree. Go ahead. So um, basically your phone, your call progress is located on the top left of your status bar. So if you do it a touch and explore to the top left of your status bar, you'll see on call progress. If you double tap on that, it'll reconnect you back to the phone. There is a, um, I did do a little bit of a shortcut on how to use um, back tap to come to the status bar right away to get to the call in progress or you can create a shortcut gesture to get to the status bar, you know, other ways too, like a two finger swipe. That's what I do nowadays is do a two finger swipe right, take me to the status bar in the top left hand corner, I just double tap, It'll take me to call in progress and then transfer the call to the phone. Oh, okay, and I like to do the vice versa if you wanna like get off your phone and put it on your watch. Is there a way to do that? Anybody? Here. This is Herbie. Herbie. Well, Herbie, go ahead. I have never found a way to go from the phone to the watch. I think you can only go from the watch to the phone. And I think <clears> that's because the watch is connected to <throat> your phone. And so it uses the phone for the actual call, but the phone doesn't use your watch for the call, knowing you're vice versa. So that's why I don't think you can transfer it, if that makes sense. All right. Okay. Hopefully that helps, David. Yes, I've always had trouble with that same thing. All right, next. Who has the next question? Thank you, David. D. D, go ahead, D. Yes. Okay. If I make a folder in notes and say I put five documents into that folder, then can I email that whole folder to a friend at one time or do I have to go in and do each document separately to email them. All right, who has a solution for D? Sharing a folder or sending a folder? Anybody have any thoughts? And this is in files, is that what you said? I'm sorry. Well, notes or files. Notes, okay, okay yeah, notes. Okay, go ahead, Herbie. Um, unless there's a, so like in the folder, is there an option to share? Like, have you swiped down or? Anything I, like that to see if there's a shop. Okay, so then maybe because yeah, I was thinking if it could button. generate a link, that would work. But otherwise, as an attachment, no, you'd have to send the uh, individual files. Okay. All okay. right. That's good question. What I need Thank, to you. Know. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Great job. Who's next? Dana. Go ahead, Dana. Yeah. Um, does anybody know why I cannot get um, my text notifications? Um, I can get mail notifications um, and my game notifications. I mean, I cannot get game notifications and heaven forbid, I need to get my game notifications. Um, um, I uh, but I cannot get text notifications either. The only one I can get, like I said, are mail. And are you I sure that somebody's? Of them. Are you sure somebody's even texting you? I mean, that's a big assumption, right? This is true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm teasing. Okay, go ahead, Shree. Um, Dana, I'm sure you're, you're probably getting more texts than Sandy is getting. So, <laughs> did you? You know, Sandy's oh, probably. I doubt that. Okay, he's feeling bad. But um, did you check in your settings under your messages and see if you turn notification on for your messages? Turn on what now? When you go to settings and you swipe all the way down to messages, and there is a notification turn on. Did you turn? You know if that one's turned on? Yes, and it's it turned is. on. Yeah, and also uh, this is Jim. Oh, 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 okay, uh, hang on, Tree. Are you finished? 
Well, the only other thing I was going to say is in accessibility, did you also turn on notifications? I think it's under, I can't remember if it's under accessibility or voiceover, there's a notification to turn on. Uh, I haven't checked there. Yeah, and then okay. also under. Okay, hang on, Jim. Okay, all right, go ahead. Okay. And then also, also under notifications itself, make sure that it's turned on there too. So okay. you got a couple of places to look under settings, notifications, messages, and accessibility and voiceover. All right. Thank okay. You. This is Linda. All right, Linda. All right. Thanks. Um, this happened to me, and um, I went to into settings, and then I went down to sounds, and then I um, looked at my uh, different, you know, ringtones and all that, and my um, text was not selected so somehow it got unselected so I had to reselect it the sound that I wanted for my text messages okay that's another possibility thanks Linda all right Dana so for your hopefully you'll get notifications of your non-existent text messages okay <laughs> all right Good All job, right, Dana. Yeah. Thank you for the question. For, for my non-existent friends. Yeah, for your non Yeah. Well, I know all about okay. that. All right. Thank you, Dana. All right. Who's next? This is Linda. Gail. Okay, Linda and then Gail. <clears throat> um, this is also pertaining to text messages. Um, I don't know if I'm losing my mind or whatever, but um, <laughs> <laughs> when <laughs> when I'm in a different app, say Facebook or mail, when you get a text, should you be able to hear the notification? Does this shrink? Go ahead, shrink. Yeah, Dana. Uh, you should get a ding. I mean, I set mine up just to get a ding notification. And when I do get a text message, that's all I get is just a ding notification. Getting a ding yeah. notification. Okay, Dana. Is Jim? Uh, hang on, Dana yeah. and then Jim. Yeah, Dana? that's what I was talking about. I, I wasn't even getting a sound or anything. It, it used to get, I used to get a sound and it read it to me and I don't, I don't get anything anymore. All right. Thank you, Dana. Jim. <clears throat> Sometimes it can depend on the apps that you're working in. I've had it where I really wanted to concentrate on something and I wouldn't turn notifications off. And I'd be like inundated with all my friend uh, trying to text me. And, you know, other times I'd be in an app, you know, and say I'm reading a book, you know, it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> and I'd get that far and then I'd get a notification about a message and it would go to the it would start reading the sentence over. It was a dark and stormy, and I'd get another notification from my mm -hmm. friend. So it really does depend on the app. And sometimes when they update apps, it, you know, they, they change stuff in there, and that, that will affect it too sometimes, how that app uh, handles things. Okay. All right, Chanel. Chanel. Um, yeah, no, I was actually going to ask about the same problem and then my phone started kind of behaving. It goes through periods where I do not, I cannot for the life of me hear my text notifications when I'm in Zoom. That's the worst culprit or sometimes Clubhouse, maybe, but um, Zoom is the worst culprit. And so I was, you know, just going to, if there was a little pose a question, okay, what things should I check? I suppose I should make sure my, if there's a way to make sure the notification volume is up, I guess, for for messages. But um, then all of a sudden this last week, I just started hearing my messages come in when I was in Zoom. So <laughs> don't ask me. I have no idea. I think it hurt you Jody? talking. Okay, go ahead, Jody. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I was actually listening to a book on uh, voice stream reader and uh, I, and I stopped and then, you know, was doing something else. And, and I got all these messages from my daughter who's like, hello, you there? You, you know, why aren't you answering me? And I never heard the, I never heard the text messages. So I, I agree. I, there are some apps that uh, YouTube's the same way. If I'm listening to YouTube, I, I miss text messages where I normally would get them. So I'm having the same problem. All right. I think her tree. Yeah. 
Um, do you know if you guys are putting your phone on mute and not realizing nope. it's on mute? This is, this is this Chanel. Is... Okay, Herbie and Chanel. The thing with Apple, though, is you have to keep in mind that a lot of times apps will just supersede anything else what you're doing on the phone. Like, for instance, you know, voiceover sometimes will get silenced for people. With voiceover, you can turn off VO, turn it back on, and that'll solve that problem. But maybe it's doing the same thing with, like, other sounds and stuff, too. And, yeah, Zoom, like Chanel said, it can be a really bad culprit, and they'll start muting other sounds. The way I... The best way I know of to work around it is to have the screen locked so that the watch will still get notification sounds and so I'm not relying on the phone. But um, that's not helpful if you're having to mute and unmute, of course. This is or true. if you don't have a watch. Okay. Or okay. if you don't have a watch. Yes. <laughs> that, that too. Thank you. That too. <laughs> Thanks, Herbie. Okay, Chanel, go ahead. Yeah, no, um, that was a real good point about, but my I think my phone has always been unmuted so um yeah but all right that's a good idea though good thought okay Terry. Terry um what it's I have an apple watch four and a six and I you know I wear one charge the other then switch them out when I need to when I'm wearing the apple watch six I lately have not been getting or intermittently only get sound notifications on the phone for things even with my screen locked and even on my watch sometimes I don't get them it's kind of weird it, it happens more frequently with the six than it does the four and everything is on and no I don't have anything muted it I don't I wonder sometimes and I've heard other people say this too I wonder if there's a bug somewhere. This is Herbie. All right, Herbie, and then we need to keep going. Okay, so yes. So by any chance, if you're raised to wait, have you made sure that's turned off? Yes, it's off, because yeah. I hate that feature. Yeah, because I've kind of noticed that too, but sometimes I've noticed like what happens is, like I have some notifications that I have coming in on the phone, like um, Dice World, for instance, because I don't like the fact that the watch, it's all universal sounds. and. Sometimes what I find is like when I don't get the notifications, it's because my phone is in the uh, lock screen mode, N not the um, screen fully locked, you know, the mode where like you've got the time and, you know, notifications in the lock screen. So sometimes it's in that and that would prevent notifications from coming in on the watch. So a lot of times when I don't get the notifications, that's usually the case on uh, my end. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think, okay, so Linda, I guess there is, we just have to check those various uh, settings and hopefully you'll, so it's apparently you're not the only one that's got this weird stuff, not getting notifications in certain apps. All right, so coming back to Gail, go ahead, Gail. Okay, um, this is another Apple Watch question, and I know you can do this on a six, and which is, you know, I can't do because of the battery and I guess uh, about uh, the sleep because, you know, uh, you know, I always have to charge the phone. But another thing I wanted to ask about the sleep too, because I was interested in, um, you know, using the watch for sleep. But then when I looked in the health app and um, I haven't done this yet, but, you know, it said like, uh, try to put when you go to bed and like if you go to bed at a certain time and then you like say you get into bed at uh you know like uh 11 or 12 11 or 12 and then you get up at um say uh six for example then uh does that assume that you're sleeping during those time i mean what if you're not sleeping um like um uh, like it takes most of the night i'm up anyway so um, I'd like to know how accurate is that Apple Watch? Because it sounded to me like it was just assuming that you're in bed those hours. And I was wondering, has anyone used the sleep app on the watch? All right, great question. Anybody using the sleep tracking, uh, any of those sleep tracking apps on the Apple Watch? I've wondered about it. 
I'll have to check. I've this wondered. Chanel. Yeah, Chanel. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I guess I'm not, I don't know if I fully understand the question. I, because I do use it and I think it just somehow it, monitors when your heart rate goes lower i i don't know how it works i've i've forgotten but i i do use it and so yeah so, so i think what she's saying is is it really measuring something is it calibrating something or is it just assuming that because you set those times that you're just automatically sleeping so is it really measuring something i guess is her question oh okay which it sounds like it is yeah go ahead tree is it is a speaker on and it's hearing us snoring <laughs> I mean, you this have to be wearing Terry. your watch, yeah. right? Okay, go ahead, Terry. And... No, no, I'm asking, is, it, oh. is, is the speaker on that it's actually hearing you, like... Well, I have no idea. Mm. I don't know. Because, I mean, it does have a speaker, so... It, I mean, it has a microphone, so it's, it's going to also hear, too. Yeah. That's Jim. Good. Okay, hold on. Terry, Ann, and then Jim. Um, I don't believe it hears your snoring, because what if somebody doesn't snore, but... What it does, it it I think it detects your heart rate, and but it also detects your your body motion. Mm -hmm. You know, it it can detect that too. I I used it, and then I tried Sleep Plus Plus, and I didn't really care for Sleep Plus Plus. So now I might go back to the sleep the native sleep app and see how that does for me. But it it does detect things that your body is is doing it there are sensors in there for that all right thank you terry Ann, and chanel okay intrigue okay go ahead jim and then moving on i thought Ann was after me but okay um anyway i think it i think i heard when they did talk about this that it did work off of your heart rate and you know just your whole metabolic rate because it has that ECG feature in it, so it can pick up your heart rate. All right. Thank you, Jim. Okay, moving on. I hope that helps you, Gail. So try to get some sleep and put your watch on. Okay, who's next? All right, thank, thank you. you. So, Michael. Thank you. Yes, sir. So I want to go back to the Apple event. Uh, <laughs> this is, it's kind of a non-technical question, but the uh you know I, I don't know if anybody actually watched it listened to it it uh at the very beginning they do this uh, uh kind of uh, a tour around california and based on the description that i heard you know they were describing all these different places around california and i'm sure the video was really cool and, you know nice scenes and all that kind of stuff but did anybody think that that was kind of weird? I mean, that's the first time they've ever done anything like that at an Apple event. It just didn't say, it seemed out of place to me. This is Shree. Go ahead, Shree. I'm glad you mentioned that, Michael, because I've heard a lot of people say that they were a little displeased with the whole, um, you know, the extra presentation that was in there. They just thought it was flat. They thought it was not like what it was before. Uh, I didn't even really pay attention to the in-betweens, uh, but this I did is, hear a lot of people Mar comment that it wasn't that that good. Wasn't that good. Okay, thank you, Shree. Marty, go ahead. Uh, I thought it was okay, and I guess it's replacing because I think uh, one, one Apple event a couple of years ago um, – Tim Cook came out of a car with, and I forget who the celebrity was. And I guess because of COVID, they didn't want him like riding with somebody. So they replaced it with that scene. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, anybody else, any comments? This is Herbie. Go ahead, this Herbie. This is Terry. Is it just me or was, I mean, I wonder if the extra presentation was just to, if anybody else that was, was like me and just thought that the overall event was really boring and was just, you know, fluff to say, yeah, we got newer products that are faster and better than the others. And so maybe the extra presentation was to try to make the event look like something more exciting than it actually was. I, I don't know. Um, okay. Is, you know, it's been very, 
you, you know, for a lot of us, you know, this is actually River new to a lot of the behind the scenes stuff with these presentations because, you know, they only introduced the DVS feature, what, last year, I think it was? Yeah. So, um, you know, I've never known what a, happened on a lot of these older presentations, but I just wonder if it was to make the event look like something more exciting than it actually was. But that's just my thought. Okay, carry on. This is David. Carry on and then David. Um, I I did not see the very beginning, but I did notice in all the between the segments or when they were going back to Tim Cook to make his next spiel, whatever that was going to be, he they were coming from some other place back to him and he would be in some different place and then all of a sudden end up on the stage at the theater, you know, like he was being teleported from <laughs> one part of the the California to another or something. Oh. I this presentation was not one of their better ones. I don't think in many ways. I I didn't really care for it. Let alone they didn't have all that. Everything was all their improvements were visual, you know, and all the rumors of the things that were supposed to be coming for the Apple Watch. You know, so far none of that has happened either. So I think they were trying to cover up for whatever they didn't have. Okay, David. Oh, yeah, this was the first one I ever watched uh, because I happened to be home because, you know, we had to, it was the day of the hurricane and everything. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, it was kind of lackluster, I guess. I did notice there were quite a few women present presenters. I don't know if that's a new thing. Uh, seemed like it was almost like 50-50 or, you know, I think there was a criticism I remember hearing before where it was mostly dudes, you know, just talking about tech stuff. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm wondering if the California Tourism Board, like, paid Apple, you know, to, like, glamorize California for them. Something. Yeah, yeah that's Michael. This is Jim. Okay, Michael and Jim. Yeah, I was about to make that comment. It, I mean, it did sound like it was, a, you know, a, a deal for, you know, tourism kind of promotion for the state of california which is kind of been a disaster right now it must have filmed before the state caught on fire and <laughs> homeless took over you know, with the, you know with the fire and homelessness and border crisis and all the other uh, stuff uh, they were trying to make things look prettier than it really is all right jim all right i was just going to say that you know ever since you know we've had covid they haven't had live presentations so instead of showing the audience and things done around state, you know, the stage where they do stage stuff and different presenters come up, they had to rely more and more on videos. And as far as a lot of California, how many of their builds for the Macs have been named after a feature in California? You know, El Capitan, yep. for example, you know, so no that's way. probably a lot of it, too. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Any well, other finally comments? This is, this is Gail. I didn't see it, but you know, I, I, you know, you're talking about what's going on in California, and uh, they just had a recall ele election too. And I don't know if that factored anything too, but maybe they were trying to take attention away from that too. Okay. All right. Moving on. Next Moving question. All right. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Mr. McCulloch. Any other questions? We have a few minutes left. This will be a quick question. This is, this is Marty. This is go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Marty, and then Terry. Uh, I was just wondering what what you guys think. Um, the watch, and, and, and I like it. And of course, and and I, and I can understand the health stuff that they put in it. But I wish it had like a few more like fun things, like the hourly chime. It, it's, I, I like it, but I wish there were more options than Bird and Bell. And I wish that there were, that you could change the ringtone in the watch because I've had it where I muted my phone and forgot to use, mute my watch. And it's this annoying electronic thing. And the only watch that I know that has a nice ringtone is, is my wife's titanium. So I think one of you guys that has... I've series four. One of you guys that has the newer one, you guys got the same ringtone I do. It's that old boring one. 
and, and it would be nice if if they improved some of those features, the fun features, I guess. Yeah, the ter- Marty's wish list. Okay, Terry. This is Shree. Oh, um, oh, hang on. I think oh. it's Terry and then Shree. Okay, go ahead, Terry. Um, I had a, a different question, so what, I don't know if Shree. Okay, make it really quick. We are at the end, yeah. so you can. Uh, is it a quick question? I don't know. Um, I wanted to change. Uh, put one of the voices one, two, three, or four. I wish they hadn't changed to numbers on my phone, and I didn't remember which one it was. So I downloaded all four of them. Now I I've got the one I want, number four, but I can't figure out how to unload the other three so it doesn't take up so much memory on my phone. Anybody have a quick answer for this is Jim? Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, those voices. You can have all four downloaded. It won't make any difference because their footprints of those voices are actually so small. Um, you know, they're they're not they're not going to affect it. So you can just have all four on there. I do. It's not a big deal. All right. Okay. That is the end. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Maria, for the presentation beginning. Thank you, Brad, for helping me co facilitate. And Mr. McCulloch for those amazing clues that nobody got. And oh, so we got half. We got half. half. Oh, that's right. Jim and you both got your chess boards. Very Thank good. Right right. Away. So now just real quick, real quick. So tomorrow's Clubhouse, Fridays in the movie, the Queen of Katwa, which will be a very cool, inspirational movie, and Apple Workshop talking about all about iOS 15. You don't want to miss that. And then we'll be back here next Monday. So come back and we'll continue the discussion, keep on learning together. So good night and thank you all. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night, guys.